Thank you for joining us for this episode in our video series on flex and rigid flex. I am Tara Dunn, and today we are going to be talking about the definition of a flexible PCB. How is that different than a rigid PCB? We're going to answer a couple of questions um, that are common to both rigid and flex, and then we're going to finish up with the definition of some terminology that is very specific to flex. So just to get things started with the definition, um, as a rigid PCB does, a flex is going to mechanically support and electrically connect the electronic components using conductive traces and pads and it's typically done by etching layers of copper laminate on layers of non-conductive foil. So flexible circuit is going to be done on flexible materials. There's many different types of flexible materials. We're going to look at polyamide today, which is probably the most common material. A rigid flex then is a hybrid of both the rigid materials and the flex materials. So it's taking the best attributes of both. It's going to be flexible and bendable, able to fold into a packaging solution or flex in final use. It's also going to use the rigid material to support dense connector areas and component areas and able to, the rigid portions allow you to do the more complex routing that some of our HDI technology requires. So the question that we're commonly asked is, what are materials that are commonly used in rigid flex? And the answer to that is there's very little limitation to the rigid materials that you can use in a rigid flex. It's going to be very similar to what we're designing with um, in our typical rigid PCB design. So everything from FR4, polyamide to high performance materials are able to be used with rigid flex. The polyamide material for a rigid flex is actually where there is an area of difference. Um, Flexible materials come in both adhesive-based and adhesive-less materials. And adhesive-less materials are going to always be recommended for a rigid flex application. And that is just due to the CTE mismatch between the adhesive layers and um, some of the rigid materials. A second question that we are asked very often is, can flexible circuits do the same things as rigid PCBs? And in many, many ways, that answer is yes, of course they can. A um, couple of inherent areas where they're not able to perform exactly as a rigid board would be, first of all, in material attributes. You know, dielectric constants and things like that are going to be different between the polyamide materials and some of your other rigid materials. But beyond that, it's really a matter of thickness or thinness. So in high layer, multi-layer applications, at a certain point, a flexible circuit is no longer going to flex. It's going to become too thick to bend and fold. So there are some things that you can do if you need a higher layer count in your flexible circuit or rigid flex, and that would be to use a loose leaf construction. So something of this nature, where instead of bonding all of the layers together, go ahead and eliminate the adhesive between certain layers. So that'll help you get a higher layer count flex circuit. On the opposite side of the spectrum is thinness. So flexible materials are very, very thin, and heavy component areas can cause cracking and breaking in those flex areas and be difficult for the flex material to support. To mitigate that, you can always work with a FR4 stiffener that's going to help add a little bit of rigidity to that area and support that component. So moving on from those questions, we did want to go through some definitions of terms and things that are very specific to flexible circuits. So we're going to start with anchors and tie downs. So in this example here, you can see a tie down. Tie downs are always going to be recommended in flex material. So that's a piece of copper extending from the pad encapsulated by the cover lay, able to help hold down and provide stability to that pad as it goes through assembly. And that's especially important in single-sided design when there's also not a plated through hole to help anchor that down. Um, on the other side of that pad, you can see the tear, teardrop. So extra material added to help transition from the pad to the trace. The pad to the trace intersection is probably the most prone area for breaking and cracking in a flex circuit design, so we try to make that as robust as possible. The other thing that is very unique to flex circuits is polyamide stiffeners. So a very common way of connecting a flex um, to a rigid board is to use a zero insertion force or some type of insertion force connector. Um, those come with very tight tolerances and maybe not necessarily in the common thicknesses of printed circuit board or flexible circuit materials. So we like to add a piece of polyamide stiffener to the edge, which helps build that up to the appropriate thickness and then allows you to insert that into the connector quite easily. Another thing I'm asked about pretty often is what is the definition of a flex tail? What is a flex tail? 
Very simple. It is actually just the flex that might be connecting two pieces of rigid material. The other thing that is somewhat unique in flexible circuit design is cross hatching of the copper. So if you've got copper shielding in an area that needs to be flexible, um, cross hatching is a very common way to help deal with that situation. So just by simply eliminating copper, which can be done on a custom basis, you can make the openings wider or smaller depending on, on what your electrical properties can compensate for, but this helps the circuit become much more flexible just by removing several layers of copper. The other thing that is unique to flexible circuits generally is pr pressure sensitive adhesive. So this is often used in cases where it's going to bend and need to be stuck into a unit. So by adding that piece pressure sensitive adhesive um, before it's finished, you have a nice tight tolerance. You can peel that off and bond this to your final unit. So to recap what we just talked about, we went through the definition of a flexible circuit, um, how that's different than a rigid flex. We also talked about a couple common questions for flex and rigid flex, and then went through a list of um, common terminology for flexible circuits. So I hope you found this information useful and we'll share it with your colleagues and peers. And we hope that you'll be able to tune in for our next episode, which is going to be on flexible circuit materials.